The reptile hobby is full of beautiful people, a wonderful community, but also there are some scoundrels out there too. So today I'm going to teach you how to buy reptiles and not get burnt by the liars and cheats. My name's Adam. This is Diamond. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. I get emails every day. This person burned me. I feel like I got burnt by this person. I got ripped off. And most of the time, it's not the case. Most of the time, nobody's ripping off anybody. It just feels like it because, well, you didn't get the deal you thought you were gonna get and you have buyer's remorse. This is generally what you see. And in my experience, I've done hundreds of transactions in the reptile space and I've had 99% good experiences. I've had some bad ones and I'll tell you about them and I'll tell you how you can avoid them too. But I just wanna make it perfectly clear, most people in this space are amazing, really good people. And the chances of you getting burned if you're someone who does, I don't know, a few transactions a year is next to zero. So let's go through it. Basically, there's a few ways that you can buy reptiles. One of them is expos, and we're gonna talk about that a lot because I think that's a great way. You can buy online. If you live in the US, for example, you have so many options for buying online. You are truly spoiled. And we've got options in Canada here in the UK and things like that. You can go to a pet store, and then there is the Kijiji Craigslist way, which is generally how I buy reptiles most of the time. Almost all of my reptiles are rescued. So I would suggest, all except for the second hand, buying it from somebody else that isn't a business, check their reviews. Now, if you go to Google, for example, you can check the reviews on Google and see exactly how these people are conducting business. If you're seeing that they have a one or two star review, well, don't do business with them. If you see that they have a five star review and it's a thousand or 800 reviews, well then that's probably going to be a really good business. You can also check on Facebook, Facebook groups. You can check on Reddit, especially if it's a bigger, if you're using a, I don't know, something big, a reach out reptiles. I'll use them as, a, as an example because they are one of the good guys in the industry. Garrett and his team are amazing. So if you want to buy, say a reticulated Python and you go to reach out reptiles and I say, Hey, that's a good place to go. Or you hear it, whatever you follow their Instagram, YouTube, whatever. And then you go on and you're going to notice they have really good reviews. And if you go to Reddit, they're going to have really good reviews. Now keep in mind, if you see a couple bad reviews. This doesn't mean to throw the baby out with the bathwater. There's always going to be disgruntled customers. There's always going to be people who want something for nothing. And there is the chance that the customer is the scammer, not the business. Now, if you're at an expo, obviously you can look at the animal and this goes for a pet shop too. So, or a reptile shop. If you go into a reptile shop or you go to a booth at an expo, you can look at the animal. So you want to make sure clear eyes, it's not oozing from the mouth. It's not wheezing. So you want to do all the checks, like the normal things that you do, just Google, what do I look for in a reptile? These are basically basically most of them, no stuck shed, you, you know, run your hand down. Is there any mites, things like that. So you're doing your due diligence as a customer. That's your job. But then also let's suppose that there's a really good deal on an expo table. And I don't know. It's a multi gene ball Python and it looks too good to be true. Oh, it's het for this and het for that and het for this, but it's $4,000 cheaper than on that guy's table with the sit. Probably not what you think it is. And I'll tell you a quick story. There is a breeder now, he specializes in a species of gecko. So I don't wanna to get too specific, so you, I'm not trying to take this guy down or anything. And in 2017, before he had this business, he was just a regular guy breeding and then selling on Kijiji. And he sold me two hognose snakes. And I was getting into hognose snakes pretty heavily at the time. And he said they were a triple het. They're het toffee belly, het exanthic, het albino, 100%. I have the paperwork to prove it, which I should have been my first, like I was pretty, new into breeding at the time. Anyway, I grew them up, I bred them, and it turns out they were all het for nothing. They were normal animals. I paid way too much money. This guy definitely knew 100%. This guy was just a dishonest, disingenuous person and I got burned. It's my own fault and this guy has really bad reputation. So I should have done my due diligence. So if you go to say a reptile expo and it's someone you've never heard of before and they're selling these really high-end animals that are het for this, het for that. Heterozygous, by the way, het means heterozygous, meaning that you carry the trait but don't show it. So I have blue eyes, my mom has brown eyes, my dad has blue eyes. So she, my mom carries the trait, she's heterozygous for blue eyes. It's a recessive gene. Anyway, when they made me, I came up with blue eyes. Same thing with albinism, right? You can have a normal looking snake that carries the albino trade, breed it with an albino animal. Wham, bam, Bob's your uncle, you get some albino animals. Anyway, always use common sense. If something seems too good to be true, it almost always is. Also beware of getting out of the hobby sales. I mean, this is legit a lot of the time and I've bought entire collections before and it was fine, right? I bought an entire collection, There's it's right here. I bought a zoo. It was. It's one of the best transactions I've ever done. The guy was super honest. He was just moving away to school. Sometimes, People get overwhelmed because, oh, I've got mites in my entire collection. I've tried to deal with this. I just can't get rid of them. And then they sell a, 
clean collection. I literally just got a snake from a clean collection and the thing had mites. It's upstairs in a quarantine area. There's no mites down here. But the point is a lot of the times when people are selling everything, there's a reason for it. They're burnt out. There's issues in their collection. And chances are if someone's burnt out and they're selling their collection, they've been burnt out for a while and they've been neglecting their animals for a while. This isn't always the case, but just be wary of something like that. And then look for endorsements. For example, if you like this channel and you trust my opinion, I'll tell you, if you want to reticulated python go to reach out reptiles if you want a ball python especially if you're in canada go to mutation creation billy's the man if you want a, a mountain horn dragon daffy's reptiles if he ever produces them or right now responsible reptile i can tell you the places that i trust and i recommend and you should find people who you trust and you can take recommendations from that you feel comfortable with and then you can go ahead and ask or go to a reptile expo and someone who's been doing it for a hundred years and everyone knows like obviously not a hundred but you know what i mean and everybody knows them hey you know i love that you're a ball python guy but I know, i'm into leopard geckos who do i go to for leopard geckos and generally when you've been around the hobby a while you know who to go to and then look for endorsements that aren't paid reach out reptiles has no idea i'm making this video garrett's never paid me a dollar same thing with billy and mutation creation responsible reptile i don't even think they watch these videos so I, they're not paying me to say these things i'm giving you my genuine opinion and that's what you should be looking for too because a lot of the times people are in cahoots and they're going to you know scratch their friends back because there's a monetary gain but that's just not always the case and you should be looking for unpaid endorsements and then when you're going to say a reptile shop this is where most people probably buy their animals i always recommend don't buy from petco and petsmart and it's not because like oh well becky who runs the petsmart uh, reptile department is a herpetologist okay maybe also petco and petsmart they buy the reptiles from what are basically the most disgusting breeding facilities that you could ever even imagine like deformed animals are thrown in the garbage to die before not euthanized just see ya so that's why i don't recommend that you buy from those places and if you google it you you can find videos of people going in and looking at these establishments just in case you think I'm exaggerating I'm not so go to a local reptile shop this is gonna be a shop that's run by someone who's passionate about reptiles not an afterthought like it would be at a big box pet store the one that I go to the reptile shop that I go to Niagara exotics in Niagara the reason I go there is because I just happened to stumble upon them the day they opened February 1st 2017 just randomly driving down the street oh there's a reptile shop I was in reptiles and I was going to the other shop at the time I walked in there and the dude treated me like I was a customer for 400 years like we were best buddies and I had never had service that good ever every time I go in there to this day but the zookeeper I hired I found her at this reptile shop and the owner had no problem with me hiring her also right so there was no competitiveness every time I go in there with a question you know hey can you probe this snake for me probing means that's how you tell the sex of a snake a lot of the time that type of service and i know when i go in there if i come home with an animal or a brick of cocoa or whatever i'm not coming home with mites i know it's really clean in there i know that these people do their utmost to make sure that they have no mites in their collection everything is healthy i've never seen a dying animal or a dead animal but that's what you want to look for is how reputable is the shop and how do they treat you as a customer because if they don't treat you well what are the chances they're treating the animals well i know that might be a stretch but i don't really don't think it is and if you know like kind of the area that i live the other shop is good too it's just this one just, they treat me really good. And then when you're looking for sex guarantee, so this kind of goes along with if it seems too good to be true. If it's something that is say a hogno snake, generally the female version of whatever the morph is, is gonna be much more money or at least a little bit more than the male. With hogno snakes, especially if they're a little older, you can tell by the tail. Females have a short and fat tail and males have a long tail because that's where they store their hemipenes. I've heard many times of people coming home with a long tailed female, it's not, it's a male, almost all the time. So if you're unsure of the sex, if you're brand brand new, you've done your research, but the thing that you're really not good at is, you know, probing and like just telling the sex and you need someone a little bit more advanced than you. If you think that you have a good deal and you're just not sure, if the person is reputable at the table at the Reptile Expo, for example, you can say, hey, can you probe that in front of me? Like, I want to see. And then you can just, you know, look on the internet how a probe works. If it goes in a little bit, then it's a female. If it goes in a lot, then it's a male. Or popping hemipenes if it's a ball python, things like that. So ask them to sex it right in front of you. Or if you don't trust that, if you still don't know how that works, Works. Hey, uh, I got a friend and then get someone who you know to come over and watch. Can they watch the sexing? You know, I just want to make sure, you know, I got burned before I trust you, whatever, whatever. Don't try to make it a, a stink or anything, but always double check and then get a sex guarantee. So 
if it's a reputable breeder, I've had this before where someone sold me hognose snake that was supposed to be female, it was a male, but it was just really tiny and it was really hard to tell. So this person genuinely made a mistake. I traded it back for a female, no problem. <laughs> this guy was a stand up guy. Unfortunately, he's retired now and lives somewhere else, but this was a good experience. Even though it was a bad experience initially, it wasn't his fault and it got fixed. Also some sort of a, a live arrive guarantee or arrive alive rather. So if you're getting something shipped, make sure that they guarantee it shows up alive and not sick. I've the last year, there's a whole thing about this breeder who sent a half dead, really expensive animal to someone with a pretty large YouTube channel. And instead of them being like, okay, well, you know, let's work this out. They just really bad customer service and very public and it really destroyed the reputation. So make sure that you're getting a guarantee of health when that animal shows up as well. And lastly, let's talk about ethics. Make sure you're getting an animal from an ethical breeder. And here's how you know, if this person, I'll use reach out as another example, right? So reach out reptiles. If you want to go tour the guy's facility, you can, you can go there, set it up, of course, don't just show up. He does retech fest, right? So you can, he's got a hundred people, more than a hundred people showing up, looking everywhere, right? A uh, Brian Barchuk, for example, the Reptarium, Legacy Aquarium, whatever. I remember when I first met Brian, who I miss dearly, I showed up and he didn't clean up the place for me. Everyone's just working randomly, like, you know, kind of doing their, their thing, like it's a regular day. And he hands me keys and he says, go into anywhere, anything. If you find one mite, one sick animal, one dead animal, I'll turn over the place to you. So if, you, if you're dealing with a place like that, you know you're gonna get quality animals. If it's someone who puts their reputation on the line like that, if it's someone, well, we'll just use the name, Slithers Incorporated, I think is, you know, uh, we did a video about it right here. This was a whole thing last year about a, a, a breeder who basically dead animals and sick and dying animals and they would just leave corpses. Don't buy from these people. You're voting with your dollar. So if you want good guys to stay in business, spend your money there. If you want bad guys to go out of business, don't buy animals. Even if it's an animal that you really, really want, if you know these people are abusing animals, like truly abuse, okay? Don't buy animals from them. Because guess what? Anyone who's willing to let animals die in bins or, you know, neglect their animals, if you get a sick animal or, you know, it's wrongly sexed or whatever, I promise you these people don't care enough about you to give you your refund or work with you or exchange the animal. So you're going to have a bad time if the animals are having a bad time. This is a general rule. If the animals are having a good time, you know, they're well taken care of, they're probably going to take care of their customers too. So I want to reiterate, mostly in this hobby, it's a bunch of good guys and a few bad apples. So if you get burned once, I promise you it's not normally like that. I love this hobby. I think it's so amazing that we have so many great people and great businesses. And I want to hear from you. Do you have a good story? Do you have a bad story? Let me know in the comment section below. And while you're down there, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button and the subscribe. It costs you nothing, but really helps Diamond and I and this channel. And as always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys get videos early, discounts on merch. You guys get one-on-ones. I'm wrapping this up because I have a one-on-one -on -one right now. I'm really excited. We're going to talk about YouTube ins and outs and stuff. I'm really excited about it. Anyway, all that for as little as a dollar a month. And I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. So that means I'll see you in the next one.